Hi everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs and I'd like to welcome you back to another video. Today I'm really excited because the Stamping Village has put together a YouTube video hop and I'm one of the stops along the way. Today we're celebrating a brand new stamp set called Happy Birthday. And this stamp set, as you can see, has different birthday options and these different options were all put together by the companies that belong to the Stamping Village. It's also a very special set because we're going to be donating $5 from every one of these stamp sets that we sell and it will benefit the Dreaming Zebra Foundation. Now the Dreaming Zebra Foundation firmly believes that all children, regardless of their financial circumstances, should have art education. And they provide art and musical materials across the country. So thank you so much for purchasing one of these sets. If you have or if you haven't and you're considering it, thank you so much for considering it because it's really going to help make a difference in the lives of children. Now when I first saw this stamp set complete, the first thing I thought of was, oh, look at these cute little tiny images, and I think they would be perfect for the wreath builder. So I'm going to make a card for you today using those tiny images with the wreath builder template. Now if you've never seen the wreath builder before, I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel talking about the wreath builder and how to use it. But basically, it's a template that allows you to stamp in a circular pattern. So I have here a piece of cardstock that's cut down to the perfect size for this template. And I'm going to place it into the template in the square orientation. Now the first stamp that I'm going to use is this stamp up here. This is by Altenu and it looks like a rose or a peony type stamp set. And I'm going to place that right here off to the side of the wreath builder template. I'm going to turn it just a little bit and I'm going to do a special inking technique on this. So I'm going to start with, move my stuff out of the way here, I'm going to start with some dusty rose ink. So I'm going to ink up the stamp with the dusty rose and then I'm going to take some passionate pink ink and I'm going to just darken it up a little bit along the base. And that gives me a little bit of a two-tone look there. Now I am going to clean this stamp each time because of the mix of colors. I don't want to contaminate that lighter color. But as long as you start with the lighter color and again the dusty rose is the lighter color and then you use that darker color, you won't ruin your darker color at all. So I'm going to stamp this all the way around eight times, and this is going to give me my basic basis for my wreath. And you can see that these images are stamping perfectly separated, and they're stamping in a perfect circular image. All right, so I'm going to stamp this again with a little bit of Dusty Rose and that Passionate Pink. And there I have my first image of my wreath. So for my next image, I'm actually going to place two images down. I'm going to use this tiny little sprig here by Pink Fresh Studio, and then I'm using the other leaf from the Altenew image. And I'm going to place them, one right here, and then one, let's see here. I'm going to do one right over here like this. I think that's going to be OK. I'll just bring it out just a little bit. And I'm going to use some Jelly Bean Green on both of these. And then I'm going to use a little bit of Grass Green just to kind of add a second color on the leaves, on the grouping of three leaves. And then I'm going to just clean those off and do the same thing again, Jelly Bean. And then a little bit of Grass Green. And you can see I'm going to have to stamp this one one last time by itself, but that's okay. 
So we've got jelly bean and some grass green. Okay, and I'm getting ready to stamp my last one. And that should complete everything. So just make sure you have all of both leafy images going all the way around. So that worked out really well. Now it looks like I have space for one more stamp. And so I am going to use this little flower here from the Pink Fresh Studio stamp. And I'm going to place that right in between there to just fill that in. And for this stamp, I'm going to use some turquoise C. So I'm going to ink that up with the turquoise C and stamp that all the way around. And you can see that fills in the wreath really nicely and adds a little pop of brightness. The pinks are really pretty and they're very subtle subdued, but that pop of turquoise really makes it jump out. And here's my last one. I'm going to finish that up. And then I have my completed wreath. Such great little images for the wreath builder. So now I'm going to turn this one into an A2 size card. So what I'm going to do here is I have a paper cutter and I'm going to cut that at the 1 and 7 eighths inch mark. Now depending on what size uh, wreath builder template you use, if you use the 4 inch template you're going to cut it at 2 inches. If you use the 3 and 3 quarter inch template then you're going to cut it at 1 and 7 eighths of an inch. Okay, so now for my next step, I'm going to mount this onto a piece of black cardstock. And I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs adhesive dot runner for this. Get that into place. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you have somewhat of an even border around all three sides. And the same thing with this one at the top an even border around all three sides. Okay. So that's looking pretty good, pretty even. Okay. So now this whole panel is going to go on top of a dusty rose card base. Make sure that's nice and even there. Looks pretty good. Okay. So now I'm going to put this aside for a minute. And using my Misty, I'm going to remove the Wreath Builder template. And then I'm going to put in this little strip of cardstock here. And now I'm going to use this stamp here. And this is the stamp that I designed for this stamp set the Happy Birthday with Love and the little hearts going across. And I'm going to line that up so it's in the center of this strip. Now, if you want, you can secure that down with the magnet in case you want to stamp it a second time. But you want to try to get it into the center with even, even amounts of space on the sides. OK. And then make sure that you always put that piece of cardstock back in place. Now I'm going to ink this up using some black onyx ink. And our black onyx ink, along with all of our amalgam inks, are Copic friendly. So I'm going to actually color these hearts in with a Copic marker. So there we go. We've got that all done. And I'm going to just put that aside. So the Copic marker that I'm going to use is R83, which is called Rose Mist. And I think this one coordinates really nicely with our Dusty Rose and Passionate Pink mix that we did. 
and I'm not doing any special shading at all. I'm just coloring this in straight. So if you don't want to use a Copic marker, you can always use a water-based marker, or you can even use a uh, water brush and pick up a little bit of the Dusty Rose ink and watercolor using the matching ink into these hearts. I just want those hearts to be a very similar color but I don't want them to overtake the card, so I don't want them to really stand out by doing red or anything like that. Just want them to all blend in nicely. Now this piece is going to go onto a black onyx strip that's cut just one eighth of an inch wider top and bottom, but it is equal on the side. So it butts right up against that side like that and on this side as well like that. And then that is going to cover up that raw edge. So that's going to go over the center. And you just want to line it up so that the white part all matches on both sides, like that. Now I have some of our disco ball sequins here. So I'm going to put some of these sequins on the card. And I'm going to use my jewel picker for that. Now you don't have to watch me put all these sequins on. Let me just show you what the finished card looks like after the sequins are done. So here is my finished card project and you can see that the sequins are all on there and they're nice and glittery. Add a nice, they add a nice little glittered touch to the card. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll give this wreath building technique a try. Underneath in the description box, you're going to find the next stop on the Birthday Fest YouTube video hop. Thank you so much for joining me today and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another video. I've included a couple other videos here that you might enjoy and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.